Okay, we're back. We're live. Four o'clock rock. We're off to see the wizard. And the, <laughs> and the wizard is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Our favorite show, our Wednesday energy show, where it all happens. We learn so much. You know, we, we see inside the crystal ball of what's going to happen. And Carolyn Carl is joining us. And John Cole is our special guest. And soon enough, you will see Sharon Moriwaki back from her travels. And we're having a reunion here today with Sharon and me. Okay, so the first thing you do is we're going to talk about Energy Efficiency Day, Carolyn. Yes, the what inaugural got? Energy Efficiency inaugural, Day. Okay. The first one. So we're here joining millions of Americans in celebrating Energy Efficiency Day today, October 5th. So something extra special here is that we wanted to thank the governor for proclaiming today Energy Efficiency Day for Hawaii. That's great. So we got some video of we that. We do, yep. Let's see what it looks like, and you can tell us what happened. Yeah, this was a fantastic day where we were joined by the commissioners, and um, Governor read the proclamation. This is our entire team here out in blue to support energy efficiency. You know, it is the smartest, cleanest way to get us, and cheapest, Cheap. to get True. us to our clean energy goals here in Hawaii. It's true. Huge amount of energy is efficiency. Absolutely. Yeah. And our program Hawaii Energy is here to help residents and businesses get there faster. You know, last year alone, um, we saved o almost 150 million kWh to the system level. So it's a lot and, it, and it's happening every day and there's little things that we can do. So is this a celebration? Is the Energy Day, Efficiency Day happening all over the country? It is. You know? Yeah, we've joined a number, millions actually, a number of different organizations, uh, efficiency groups, utility programs, large corporations in just getting the word out to people to help them make smarter decisions about their energy use to stop being wasteful to know that there's little things you can do whether it be changing your light bulbs changing you know the way that you wash your clothes um, tips all over um, if you visit our hawaiienergy.com right now you can follow us on twitter instagram and see all the great stuff that we're talking about we actually hit the streets today too, downtown at well, lunch. Well, what did you do? You walk, you walk the streets. We spread the good word. <laughs> <laughs> we we gave out all sorts of information. Again, just raising awareness, and you wouldn't believe how excited people get just at the simple tips that they can take home right away and yeah. implement fast, quick solutions to to reducing your electricity bill. Could have been your blue shirts too. That may have been it. We had a big horn and clappers as well. <laughs> well so, but. but you know what I get out of this? I get out of the, fa the fact that the, the whole energy efficiency, uh, uh, you know, phenomenon mm -hmm. uh, and public interest is, is going national. Mm -hmm. And that it's, ta it's taking root. Yep. It's connecting up. And it becomes a national phenomenon now. It's not just the state of Hawaii. It's not just your organization. It's everyone involved in energy is picking up on this. Totally. And not only is it a national level, but I really feel like here in Hawaii, we're leading the way, too, with everything that we have. I know John will probably talk a lot about renewable integration projects, smart grid, all sorts of stuff that's happening in our universities. But um, programs, stakeholders all, all over the country are recognizing you know, what we're doing here on, on all sides. So it's a good thing. It's awesome. It has to keep on going. Exactly. You know, we, exactly. we have to have the same conversation you know, next year, but yep. sooner yep. than next year. Yep. So, next week? Next week? Okay, <laughs> all right, I'll do that. So, but now, knowing that, knowing we are now in kind of a, a new paradigm with Energy Efficiency Day, once a year anyway, okay. um, how should people conduct themselves today to help you celebrate, to help us all celebrate Energy Efficiency Day, Carolyn? Well, social media is a great way to get the word out. Um, again, visit hawaiienergy.com, at my Hawaii Energy, Twitter, Instagram. Um, the hashtag for Energy Efficiency Day is hashtag EE Day 2016. So you can see all the cool stuff, pictures of lights and groups and big facilities, all sorts of cool stuff. I was just checking it out earlier. <laughs> um, but you know, as always, on uh, every day, you can reach out to us. So hawaiienergy.com, you can give us a call, 537 five five seven seven um, and just we're here to help as a resource for both you know the residential and the business customer so you can realize the savings quicker you guys are on a roll we're trying yeah every day John you have questions or comment 
What do you want to say about this? How does it react? Does your heart beat faster like mine? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's great. I assume this is going to be an annual day every October. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, as the inaugural one, I think that there's a lot of groups that got on board a bit later, um, but preparation will continue throughout this year to make it even bigger and better. More street corners next year. Right. More, more right, awareness. Uh, more awareness, exactly. Every, exactly. May I, you can quote me on this. Every day is energy efficiency day. <laughs> In my world, for sure. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's Carolyn Carl, Deputy Director of the Hawaii Conservation and Energy, a great organization, and so much involved in this very important initiative. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to take a short break. We're going to come back, and you are again going to see Sharon Moriwaki and enjoy her as we do. We'll be right back. <laughs> I'm Stan Energy Man, and I want you to be here every Friday. Noon, thinktechhawaii.com. Watch the show. Be there. I pity the fool who ain't. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. I hope you'll join me each Friday afternoon as we explore the amazing world of science. We bring on interesting guests, scientists from all walks of life, from all walks of science, to talk about the work they do, why they do it, and moreover, why it's interesting to you what the science really means to your life, its impacts on you, how it's shaping the world around you, and why you should care about it. I do hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. for Lakeable Science. For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We're giving you the best tips and with our best health coach here. So, Viva Health Coach. Viva la comida saludable. Aloha. I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. I also have a blog of the same name at kawilucas.com where you can see all of my past shows. Join me this Friday and every Friday at 3 p.m. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Chantal Seville, host of the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii, and I'm going on tour. I'm taking you around the world. We're going to Canada, and then we're going to, well, we're in America, then we're going to San Francisco. So keep staying tuned, 11 a.m. every Wednesday on the Savvy Chick Show. We'll see you next time. Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stand the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday, here on Think Tech Hawaii. Pumped hydro, that's the word. We just had a great show on Hawaii, the state of clean energy, uh, with uh, uh, George uh, St. John and Ray Starling. And we're talking about how, how, uh, how okay, we're back, we're live, we're here, look at us. <laughs> <laughs> this is Hawaii, the state of clean energy, every Wednesday at 4 p.m. We have such fun, we learn so much, we meet such interesting people like John Cole, for example. <laughs> Sharon, you and me, and John. Yeah, that's John. what we got here. Yeah. And so, this month, this month is really exciting because we're going to hear what is happening at the university. And well, John is coordinating this Let's whole preface month. that. You know, there's a lot of stuff lot. happening. And you can quote me on this. There's a lot of stuff happening at the university. Right. It's so big. It's such a juggernaut of stuff. I mean, everywhere you look, there's something happening. And the problem with that is we've got to tie it together. So John is there in the middle of it at HNEI, which everybody knows stands for Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. Okay. So John's and gonna John tell us sees it all that. happening. So John, what is happening and how are you tying it together? <laughs> well, like you said, Jay, there's an awful lot happening and I'm sure I'm not even aware of everything. Um, and I do not tie it all together. I do see a lot of things that could be and work we'll better you. eventually. <laughs> but my plan for today was just to kind of go through the different programs and colleges and schools that I know about and just highlight a few of the things that are going on and concentrate a little bit on uh, College of Engineering and HNEI itself. Um, mostly because I know more about those, but, um, and there's a few other uh, areas as I go through my list that, uh, that are gonna be um, on shows later this month, so mm -hmm. Good. I'll explain mm -hmm. a little so bit about that. So this is the month for what's going on at UH. Right. Good. So, um, like I said, there's a lot going on there. The College of Engineering has various programs that I'll discuss a little later today. HNEI, I mean, our mission is renewable energy and efficiency and, and helping to uh, make partnerships 
and you know, develop technologies and demonstrations of technologies and to help inform policy in the state. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, there's also things going on at the law school. For a long time, they've mm -hmm. had a very um, robust environmental law program, which is nationally recognized. And more recently, they've, within that environmental law program, they've started an energy law program as well. Mm -hmm. And I know you probably know Sharonda yeah, Baker. Yeah, Sharonda, who, who Energy helped, Justice. Yeah, energy right. Justice. And she helped start that. And she's away right now on a, a Fulbright uh, Award oh, oh, wow. in Good Mexico, I think, helping yeah, them great. with some of their energy yeah. and energy policy issues. Um, also at the business school, I mean, there's a, a, a lot of things going on, but they have a PACE program, which is Pacific Asian um, Center for Entrepreneurship, um, where they kind of try to meld different disciplines and put it in a business context. Mm. And HNEI itself had fund in a, funded a couple of mm. fellowships well, there. Mm. Um, so, so what kind of business, I mean, how does the business school? The, 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 yeah, how, the, it's, the idea was to kind of merge the t technology analysis and the business issues together where they could kind of cross train between the business legal and techno technological aspects All of three. energy systems yeah. so they learn how to so create a business in energy is that sounds like a um, startup entrepreneur yeah, stuff, is that yeah. what they do yeah i mean that's kind of the idea of the pace program but i mean we sponsored a few to concentrate that on energy but the program itself is widespread across almost any but business this idea is different and separate from the other accelerators around town Right. This is just at pace. Right, and later I'm going to mention one, an accelerator at UH. Um, I might as well do that now. Yeah, <laughs> it's called yeah. Accelerate UH. Yeah. And Would you spell that? Because that's a strange it's spelling. It's XLR, the numeral eight, UH. So it's called Accelerate UH, and they're there to help um, any entrepreneur that's kind of linked to UH. It can be students, it can be faculty, it can be alumni. Pretty much anybody who has a, a link to UH and an idea with a business or maybe a patent type thing that they want to go out and pursue, mm -hmm. um, they're there to help them through the process, to help them train in the various aspects that they're going to have to go through to you know, either develop a business or um, help them get a patent and, and monetize that. And um, they've been active in the energy area too. I mean, we have a couple of HNEI mm -hmm. people that have gone through their program. Um, one for patents and others for business. Um, we actually just had a briefing by them a, a week or so ago um, to you know, encourage more of us, because there are quite a few um, HNEI faculty who would have patents and stuff with their energy, and they would help them you know, kind of bring that out in an entrepreneurial way to uh, get it out there more in the, the business world and the actual use and monetization but of those the, but things. But do they just help you if I had a project and I wanted to start a business or I wanted to sell this product? Or do you have to go through their training program in order to get the help? Um, well, they have an application process and they actually do some initial funding. Um, they look mm -hmm. at your application. That They have like venture capitalists from, you know, the mainland who mm -hmm. are on the wow. team and actually you know, talk to prospects and, and the people who are in the program. So they help not only guide them with the education and how to get through the process, but also with funding. I mean, they start with one round of funding and if it keeps going, they can do another and then, you know, guide you toward even more funding. If you have you to be affiliated with the university or can I just off the street say, hey, I need some help. I, I have this idea I want to say. Um, I, I'm not positive, but I think it has to be affiliated, to be affiliated with the university in some way. So you have yeah. to be part of the program. You have to apply for the program. Yeah, they do have like a short application form where you can get your idea in front of them and they'll consider it and maybe... Mm -hmm ask you to elaborate. That's it's a great. Good program, That's yeah. great. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And by the way, <laughs> if, if you've become aware of any of those groups that have an idea worth discussing here on Oh, Think that's Tech. right. Bring them We'd here. We'd love to have a show with them. Sure. We, we do that kind of show by Skype all around the country because they pitch, they pitch to us. And when they do, you know, most of the time we say, okay, pitch to us on the air. But if they want to pitch to us here, from the university, we'll do that. Yeah, well, you said a couple are from H&EI, right? What kind of projects are they? Um, I know Mitch Ewan, who does a lot of the, oh, yeah, hydrogen, the hydrogen work at UH, had, has a patent. He's gone through their really? program. I'm not sure if the patent is pending or, or it's being worked out. I don't know if it's been granted yet. Mm -hmm. And I know there's other, you know, different things in the 
bioplastics and things like that oh, have, really? that have been going on. Mm, yeah, we should. We should. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I'm uh, Susan, uh, Susan uh, what's her name? Yamamoto. Uh, Susan Scott Yamamoto, uh, who runs Pace. Um, she's been on the show many times, oh. and uh, she's she's That'd really be good to see a what, great organizer what for entrepreneurial that. activity. Yeah, so, that sounds good. That's a great connection, though, yeah. and you're in mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And the, the next college I was going to bring up is the School of Social Sciences, which oh, Sharon is, works for. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> um, it includes the Public Policy Center, which Sharon works for. Who they do energy and policy research and facilitate the whole energy policy right. forum. Po policy forum comes out of the College of Social Sciences. <laughs> so I mean, they do a lot of work to try to help coordinate most of the energy stakeholders in the state. You know, get issues just in the group for discussion where frank discussion can be had and you know people can think about how to approach our problems mm -hmm. um we have all, several all regular meetings <laughs> a year where people you know kind of give updates as to what they've been doing and we actually talk about the issues that are you know either pending or need resolution for us to move forward in clean energy and i think uh, you know they do a great service in facilitating that discussion and and trying to get some solutions and results with some safety in other words if i reveal an idea to you you're not going to copy me right <laughs> this is all a trust basis mm. right? <laughs> right right we facilitate good discussion <clears throat> civil discussion on the issues yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And also within the School of Social Sciences is the University of Hawaii Economic Research Organization. And they've been doing work with energy. Um, they do some modeling that uh, mm -hmm. kind of looks at energy and its impacts on the state economy, whether it's the pricing of energy and or, you know, how many people are getting solar PV. They've looked at a lot of different issues that, you know, have wider statewide economic impacts. And actually, next week's show, we're going to concentrate on that. We'll have a guest from UHERO here and talk that about that. Uh, McKenna Kaufman. Mm, good. So we'll talk about that a lot more in detail next week. I feel it coming on, though, John. Party. Party. Energy party. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were UH energy talking party. politics for a minute. <laughs> all, the <laughs> <laughs> all the people at UH who are involved, all the people you've been listing, all the organizations, and departments, and groups, and what have you, they should all have a party and okay. say hi. Right. That would be invaluable for them to connect up, because out of that will flow new ideas, connections. I would agree. That's true. No, That's no. true. I yeah. think that might be a way to connect everybody. We'll have to get right? an organizer. Yeah. Right? Okay. We'll make a party. Sure. Yeah. We love parties. We could but do there that. Is, <laughs> there is a lot going on. And even within HNEI, I don't know everybody that works there. We're kind of in different buildings and, you know, yeah. our own offices or labs. So I, I think be good to get better communication and connection yeah. making yeah. is yeah. definitely a good, a good idea. idea. True. Good idea, Jay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, <laughs> we'll party. <laughs> yeah, I did want to mention one other Please. part of UH that's involved in a lot of energy research, and that's the Applied Research Laboratory at the university. They were established just like eight years ago. Um, they're sponsored by the Department of Defense and the Navy, and they look at researching and developing and testing technology, you know, that will help further the Navy's goals. And a big piece of that is um, on the energy side. Um, and actually, two weeks from now, we're going to have uh, Carl Campagne. Oh, good. He's a good guy. Yeah. He's going to be He's here one of our talking about hosts, yeah, so. a lot of what they do, you know, yeah, with fuels, the green biofuels. fuels and biofuels initiatives and waste energy and a lot of other things that they're looking at. You know, there could be a database on this about who's doing what you know, and the, who the individuals are and contacts, and it could be on a website. It could be on HNEI's website. <laughs> <laughs> well, this could is a good start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a good start. I mean, John has done a great job in just getting all the people who are doing things, because yeah, there's a lot going great. on at UH. It goes to a good place. And yeah. like I said, I don't know everything that's going on, so I'm sure there's other areas yeah. that I haven't touched on where people are looking at clean energy issues being renewable energy integration or efficiency type things. And if I can mention, for the last show of this month, um, somebody from HNEI, Jim Maskery, will be on talking about energy efficiency, mm. things HNEI is doing, and on campus we've got some test buildings that 
or just completed their net zero buildings and there's a lot going on there and he's also going to bring in how you know the UH campus is has a requirement to be net zero and I think it's 2045 that's uh, in a, a state law a year or two ago so there's a lot of work being done on that oh, so okay. Jim will be here to is all the talk campuses about those things. or just Manoa all the campuses are working toward that yeah, I, I think they're working toward, but... Like, but when you think about it, you, you realize that every, that I can think of, every school, every agency, every department, they're all doing something on energy because it's, it's what's happening. <clears throat> For example, uh, we have as a, a host, uh, Martin Despain. He teaches uh, at, at the School of Architecture. He's very interested in sustainability, um, you know, in, in dealing with climate change and sea level rise and all those environmental issues, mm -hmm. but also energy and energy efficiency. Mm -hmm. You want to design a house these days, you have to do that if you're an architect. So there's connections that, that go beyond the people who are actively involved, you know, in energy, people who are doing, you know, other mm -hmm. things in energy from the university. Yeah, and, and, and today I think economics has, always been a factor in Hawaii, but I think more and more and more it's becoming so. I mean, even, I'm sure people are happy when they do these things that it helps the environment and slows climate change. <clears throat> but more and more it's becoming just an economic decision, yeah. mm -hmm. especially on the energy efficiency side when there's so many things people can do and devices they can put in that can help them use less energy and you know not have to spend the money on it. And then other things like PV mm -hmm. and, and things like that where the, the cost coming down, it just makes economic sense to people. And, and I think that's what grabs people, mm -hmm. at least initially, more than, more than a lot of the other yeah. things. At least regular people who aren't mm -hmm. involved in energy every day like we are. But we need uh, <laughs> you, Hero. We need, we need McKenna Kaufman and, and, the, and her friends because <clears throat> we have to make that evaluation on everything we do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're going to find out that efficiency is great and it saves you money. Sometimes you're going to find out that it's not great <laughs> and doesn't save you money. And you have yeah. to make the evaluation. You have to, in order to determine a strategy, you have to ask those questions. And an economist is a good person to ask. <laughs> Definitely. I, I want to know, since John, John is like the heart of HNEI, what, uh, no, wow. what, what, yeah, what, is, she said that in public, John. <laughs> that, what is, what does, uh, HNEI is charged, we call you, you folks the research arm for energy for the state because you, you are the agency, uh, you know, established by law to be the energy agency or doing research on renewables and mm -hmm. assessing them. So what, what is the big kind of things that, that HNEI is doing? Um, like you said, we were established in statute. <laughs> um, and, and initially just to, you know, work with government and organizations to reduce the state's dependence on fossil fuels. And we've been doing that for a long time. Um, a lot of it is through federal grants and things like that. And eventually we got some state funding which comes through the state barrel tax, but that wasn't until, you know, 2009 or so. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, we've got a lot of areas of interest where we do research on technologies and, and um, different ways to integrate things into the grid. And a lot of what we're trying to do is use that to help better inform state policy, um, whether it's at the legislative level, uh, mm -hmm. the PUC level, or, or other places. Um, we feel like we have the capability to do some independent technical analyses to help better inform the policy making or decisions that are being made. Um, and it's independent in the sense that a lot of times all the PUC mm -hmm. or legislature may have to look at is something either from the utility who may or may not have an interest in doing mm -hmm. or moving forward on the policy path that the legislature, for instance, chooses or you know, some of the industries and, and vendors of the technologies who definitely have their own business interests. So we hope to be you know, an independent technological resource to help you know, th that policy making on whatever so level it's, it is. It's really objective data and data-driven um, analyses and recommendations. Yeah. That let, let me gild that, Lily. Um, you are authoritative. You are a scientific organization. 
you are dedicated to finding policy based on data and science. There's nobody else who does it quite like you. And you're clear and clean, you know, you're not, you're not hung on any particular agenda. So you are very authoritative and we, sorry to say, we count on you <laughs> <laughs> to approach the legislature and straighten them out on things they may be confused about. And as we go, as we go forward, that becomes all, all the more the case, John. No pressure. <laughs> but it is important. It is important because, you know, we have a lot of opinions swirling around. And, some of which and, are good and some of which are yeah, not but, good. You know, but then you need to have it somewhat fact-driven and research-driven and do the testing, which is what you folks do. Yeah, and analyses. And just analyses. Yeah, we're definitely in the short strokes on trying to figure out the best way. It's easy to make a mistake. It's hard to recover from a mistake. Um, we need the best thinking we can get. You, you are in the center of that, John. No kidding. Seriously. See, it was a heart. <laughs> a heart. <laughs> we are in energy, in clean energy. Do you, you want to respond and disagree with me? <laughs> um, I, I don't that the need is there. I mean, I, I wish we could answer everything, but, I mean, we do analyses to try to, you know, help inform the best decisions we can, whether it's, you know, Mm -hmm. what we can do to help get more renewables on the grid, what the cost of that is, what the benefit is, and if it's mm -hmm. worth spending money on this or that and solution. those are important yeah. analyses, yeah. And yeah. in a lot of ways, the state is in the forefront in this area, so, I mean, as best as we can, we like to inform that with, you know, technical analyses that are independent of, you know, like you said, having any, any chin in the game and wanting one outcome over another. We just want to help do it the best way we can. So where can I find your stuff? Where can I look at your reports? Where can I learn about your projects? It's all on our website. I believe it's hnei.hawaii.edu. Yeah, that sounds good. hnei.hawaii.edu. You can go and learn a lot there. Yeah. Okay, Sharon, time for you to close. Make okay, a summary close. and close. I think that research is really important. The analyses are really important. The university plays a pivotal role in all of that, and we count on them. So I'm glad that John HNEI is doing that in the forefront and leading the way and hopefully coordinating, and we'll hear more about that in the weeks to come. Yeah. Great, John. Thank you so much. Thank you. Not only for doing these shows and setting them up, but for doing what you do at HNEI. I appreciate that. Thank you, guys. Very appreciate good. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye -bye.